Hello, welcome to Straw Family Farm, take two. Um, we're going to get right into it. The table is covered with stuff. Um, a lot going on this week. I didn't have to work, so let's just get into it. In the chapel, um, I've been struggling with two um, actual verses this week. I say this week, it's just been like the last four days, three days three days but I'm gonna read them both to you one is from 2 Timothy 1 6 and it says stir up the gift of God which is in thee and then um, Romans 12 6 says we have different gifts according to the grace given us so I'll get into that here in a little bit um, yeah I'll just go at that that's something that happens in the in the farmhouse and and I'll get into that a little bit later but I do have some totally hooked Yay! okay so first thing I'm gonna show you is the second poncho I started it and finished it um, it's a Christmas gift I used five skeins of Peru Peruvian Highland wool and it is this beautiful okay so I used the virus um shawl pattern and i made it into a poncho and as you can tell you really can't see the seam up here yeah this right here is seamed okay but you really can't tell when i turn it around and show you the back it goes together beautifully um i had this much yarn left which isn't a whole lot but I did put it in a baggie and because this is a gift and this is wool um, I want her to be able to fix things or bring it back to me let her keep up with this and um, yeah bring it back to me if if anything happens or anything has to be fixed so I did put that in a little baggie and it will be pinned to it along with washing instructions this is for a young lady who's never had anything made of real wool and I'm pretty much going to tell her, you know, hand wash, no agitating, um, dry clean if she wants. But yeah, she's a little bitty thing and this is going to be huge on her, which is good. It's the style. She's a country girl and I like the fact that it'll last her 100 years. I'm hoping, because red is her favorite color, that she'll really get attached to it and use it. <coughs> okay, the next thing that I have is this shrug that I made. And it's done with its armholes and all that. Now, it fits loosely. So, I kind of wanted it to be real drapey with just some armholes. And I've got the armholes here. Um... But it didn't take the whole um, cake. I used that shawl in a cake um, that I got from Mary Maxim. It's just an acrylic. But I have this much left. And so what I did, and, and I'm going to redo this. I don't like the way it is. I wanted it to be really loose and open. But I think I'm going to do it in a fillet crochet style so that it's a little bit more open and then when you pull it it's going to be a hair thing so I want it looser than that and I don't want it all that defined how thick um, the other thing is is I want it long enough that if they want to wrap it around their neck and have it as an accent for this that's fine um, just kind of a catch-all you can tie it in your hair use it as a, a thinner scarf if you wanted to kind of thing um, the Mary Maxim kit, I have not finished it. Um, it is exactly where I left it last week. Yeah, but I've been so excited and doing some other things. Um, I got those two projects done in order to start one that I was really interested in doing. And I did get it started, so I'm going to show it to you it's not totally oh there were the scissors um this is in the basket i still have that infinity cowl that 
the white and gray that I'm doing. It's just one to fill time when I don't have anything else going on. Um, it's mindless. I like to, I normally used to be monogamous, but here lately, I just like one mindless that I can take to work with me, work on it, whatever. This one is not mindless. So, um, I got two skeins of this and I balled it up. I got it when I got the other and it's got some reddish, pinkish, brownish, and hopefully I can get a better picture of that here in a minute. But I have this book. I've had it for years. It's by Ann Regis and it's called Crochet Wear and it says 25 fresh designs and eh, they're probably a little outdated now. But in this and I don't know why it's done this way but she has two patterns in here and they're almost identical we've got this one right here which is called aqua geo and it's done in greens with white trim and then we have geo tan now <laughs> yeah I think that should have been the same one and just modeled in different the patterns are almost identical um, I can't find any real differences so I am following the aqua although I did look at the other this is the one and anybody that knows me knows that if I have to make two pieces, which these are pretty simple. First you make two and then you just put the neck and the armholes on them. So I have, I got two skeins of this. Okay. And I got it. It is Lanaza hand dyed. It is 50% alpaca, 23% linen and 23% tin, tinsel. Um, yeah, let me see if I can get that. There you go. So, I got that and it, it's super soft, but it's also a fingering weight. Okay. Which is my preferred weight, um, to work with. And because I do anything I do that's in two. I like to, I've got these tangled, I like to do them at the same time. Now, the reason be, if I do socks, I do them both at the same time uh, to a certain point and then I do, because if I make a mistake, a pattern is a pattern, but little mistakes in it just become part of the pattern. I want these two to match, so anything that I do um, here is the first square and it goes with, hang on, I've got them tangled in here and this is not good. Uh, yeah. Okay. Let me tuck that through there. Okay. So I've gotten this far on this one and I have it going off of one ball and then I have this one going and that's as far as I've gotten on it. They both match. They both line up perfectly. Um, I did think this would pull a little bit different, but I'm kind of liking it. You know, um, the pink, let me see if I can get this. Um, this is white. The pinks, if you see, there's reds, pinks, and browns in there. I just thought it would pull a little bit differently. Not that I'm not liking it. I love it, but it's just not pulling the way I thought it would. So when it was skeined, it was, um, and you can see, well, you can't see really. It's a pinky part and then a brownie part and a pinky part and a brownie part. And it was really cute. It's just working up differently. I'm going to say that I do like it but it is working up differently. So, um, that being said, I have it on the second ball. I am the one 
that works both socks from opposite ends of the ball. So if I was doing a pair of socks with on one skein, I would have one out of the center pull and one out of the side. And that way, if I do make a mistake, and I stop at the same exact spot on both. So when I go to pick it up, if I miss a row or whatever, if I don't figure it out on the first one, the second one's gonna match. So <laughs> that's just my thing for making everything match. Um, I do think that it's gonna be really cute. Um, and it's just called a Geo. Um, there's an Aqua Geo and a Geo Tan. And I'm doing that on an eye, on a fingering weight. So I'm hoping that it'll be kind of drapey loose. I don't know. Um, and we'll see how far I get with each skein. Um, each skein, I don't remember how many yards is in. I remember thinking that I thought that there was quite a bit. Um, da, 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 da. Let's see there. There's the, it's 100 grams, something I'm waiting for to, 440 yards. So I'm hoping that 440 yards should do a big enough square and it should be good but we will see worst case scenario i will keep it as a gift to give to somebody who's smaller than me i really think that i'm going to keep it for me i don't know i'm like i said i'm working on getting stuff together so that at christmas and birthdays and all of that i've got a tote of stuff for gifts and right now i've got two ponchos in it i've got the shrug I've got, I actually have a circular poncho already in there that's yellow. I finished it, oh, <coughs> sometime this winter before I went back to podcasting. I'll show it to you sometime. So that is all I have in the basket. Um, I just finished those two, finished that, cut down on what I've got. I want to get that blue scarfy head thing to go with that so that it's a set done. Um, I will say that on the um, geo, I have not made this pattern before, so I actually have to read and have my book in my lap. Um, and yeah, it slides off my lap, so it's slow going. Once I get to um, round seven, then it becomes redundant um, up until you finish it. So. Right now, I'm just trying to get that center part right, which that right there. I have just made it a square, so yeah, I think I'm on row, oh, sorry, row five. Um, it, it's the second round after the corners. I just made the corners, so yeah. All right, that is all I have for in the basket. Um, in the dye pots, I haven't gotten there yet, and there's a reason for that. Um, I haven't dyed anything since you guys saw me over dye the one yarn. Um, I will be, if anybody's watching this and wants greener shades, I'm getting ready to put in an order. So get with me. I know I've got some wholesalers that um, are retailers that do wholesale with me. So get with me and I will get you ordered whatever you need and get it to you. So I will be putting in an order probably this week. On the wheel. All right. And those dyes are greener shades dyes. So if you're interested in them in a kit, um, nine colors and you can make over 230 some colors. Um, I've got to find my digital book, but I have my printed book. So, yeah. All right. On the wheel. Um, the Lindsay, R L Lindsay, R H Lindsay, whatever it is. Um, yeah, I started with a domestic primitive 
domestic or primitive breed wool. Anyway, last week I showed you that I took the two pounds and I divided it into four ounce balls. And I did eight ounces. And so far I've gotten 466 yards out of this. This twist has not been set or anything like that because I do plan on dyeing these. Um, but I want to get the whole two pounds done and see how many yards I've got. Um, so yeah, I've got 466 yards. That left, all right, when I'm doing bulk, let's talk about that. Um, first off, I've got a jumbo flyer. That's how I got all of this plied. And I, I only use it for plying. Reason being is I, if I fill the whole thing with single plies, I don't have any flyer big enough to ply it on. So, my jumbo flyer, and that's for my kiwi. Um, it only fits on my kiwi. So, I've had my kiwi literally a long time. It's not, it is the first kiwi. It's not a kiwi 2, kiwi 3, kiwi whatever. It is a kiwi. <laughs> it was before they started numbering them. And yes, it's got the kiwi on the foot pedal and all that. But, so I used standard bobbins and I did four ounces on each one. Then I applied them together on the jumbo and I got 466. Now, that left some on each bobbin. I have since taken another four ounce ball and started to fill those bobbins again. I will continue doing that until I get down to one bobbin. Then I'll ball wind it and ply it back on itself. So, um, I do Navajo ply, but not this. I, I'm being very specific with this. Um, Navajo ply creates a three ply, and I just wanted two ply. So, yeah. And it, it's working up really, really nice. I like it. Um, yeah. I don't know if you can. There we go. There we go. It is amazing. Now, I will tell you this. As I'm spinning, and you guys know I keep hitting the table. Hitch keeps hitting the table, too. So, he's underneath. He's wallering in the front now. But, uh, I will tell you this. Um, I lost my train of th thought with that. I have no idea what I was going to tell you. <laughs> oh, yes, I do. Okay. So, I bought this stuff. It was fairly inexpensive. Um, there are, whoever this wool comes from, they use pine shavings or wheat because there's little chunks of, and they may use both. Um, there's little flakes, so when I'm spinning, it falls out, and then when I'm plying, the rest of it falls out. So it comes out a pretty clean yarn, but you'll still see some vegetation matter in there. It is what it is. I don't mind because I spin right off the sheep, as you guys know, and I pick mine. I, I can I can shear a whole sheep and then pick it out and spin it before I even wash it. So, um, yeah, that that is kind of who I am. So, <laughs> dirt, don't scare me. <laughs> and they still make beautiful yarns. So, and by the time it gets dyed and all that stuff, there's not going to be anything left in it. It's beautifully cleaned. It does have some little bobbles and stuff, but I think that makes it hand, it look more hand spun. So, or handmade, I guess I should say. All right. Now we're going to add back in right here something that we did at the other farm. And as y'all know, it's springtime. So in the fields, I brought, I've still got to go get my greenhouse and my blocker and all that stuff. But I brought the garden tower or grow tower, the big five foot tower with the um, worm hotel in the center. And I got my, uh, it, it's a Clyde's garden planner. I don't know if you guys have ever seen this. I'm, I, I don't know if we ever talked about this or not, but anyway, that's fault. Okay, so on one side, oh, sorry. It's got spring. You put the red line where, um, and it's got, I don't know if you can see it. It's got the month, and then it's got little days. Ooh, going the wrong way. Days right here. So April, 
19th or so is um, our last freeze date. So you'd move this right up here to April. And yes, I'm trying to do this backwards. So, and then that would tell me over here, oops, over here is my vegetables. This will tell me when to get them in. This is too frozen. Um, this tells me like start inside if you're going to do it inside and out. And then this is when to put them in the garden and stuff. So, um, and it's got, uh, over here it's got the months that, you know, gestation and all that stuff of everything. Um, it's got everything from carrots to peas to spinach to cabbage, cauliflower, green beans, melons, peppers, tomatoes, okra, pumpkins. On the back side, whoop, and yes, it does that. So, see, it's not me. It's just, it's. I guess you flip it this way. Yeah, I just figured that out. Okay, so fall is on the other side. So if you plan on doing a fall garden and doing any of these things in the fall, you put the line where your last freeze date is, and it will tell you. So ours is out in October to November, just depending. I'm going to put it at October 25th. And see, you can see over here when to start them inside and when to get them out in the garden so yeah it it is what it is i like using this little thing um i have our last freeze date i don't know what year this is but i just get it out of the almanac so and, and this is about an average i mean it, it's not that it won't work <laughs> it's just about an average um, but, you know, according to the almanac, everything changes. Um, this is March, and I'm going to get ready and start all of mine that I can inside. And I've got my little greenhouse that I'm going to move out here um, and start from it. I did go get the soil and stuff because if I can figure out how to do it, we have a video on that garden tower and I'll try and put it in a little card up in the corner. You know, like people, oh, up here in the corner. I'm not that efficient, but I'm going to try. First off, I have to find that video. And if you remember, we've been doing this five years. So I got to go back and look for it. <laughs> but anyway, so In the Fields is back. And we'll let you know what goes on now. So far, um, we had gotten some stuff from the farmer's market and i uh saved some okra seeds so we'll be putting that that will go in the ground we're just gonna have a small one strip garden and the tower and then i had gotten a large watermelon so we have some watermelon seeds that i dried um and then these had come with some pots and they're uh micro greens they're soybeans you know you clip them put them in your salad microgreen whatever so i will be doing those <coughs> i think the microgreens are going to cover the top of it because it'll help with water retention and i have four little packets yeah get them out of here you know at least it'll help with the water retention um i am super excited to have my grow tower out here i really am so yeah all right moving on into rj's world um, he's been rodeo and he had a really, really tough week. Um, there's a gentleman that owns an arena that RJ always goes to rope at. And he has a son and the son has a grandson or has a son. The little boy was three. Dad was hooking up to the trailer and the little boy was supposed to stay in the truck, but he climbed out and was run over and he passed away. So basically dad ran over his own son and RJ had to attend that funeral. I didn't know him well enough. I mean, they know I'm RJ's mom. If I tell them who I am, oh, you're RJ's mom. They're not gonna recognize me on the street or anything. And I didn't feel comfortable enough going to a funeral. I mean. So anyway, RJ had to go to a funeral of a three-year-old little boy. 
it's a rough one to take. I mean, I'd seen the little boy once, but I feel for that family. I feel for the dad. Um, he has been since put on suicide watch. Um, I don't know that I wouldn't be suicidal if I ran over my own child. So, yeah, it was an accident. It, it is what it is. Um, it happened for a reason. I'm sure God knows what he's doing. But, man, it's tough to swallow. And it's even tougher for a 24-year-old who thinks he is invincible. Or 23-year-old. He'll be 24 this year. So, RJ is still the invincible stage in his life. <coughs> um, but, yeah, I definitely can feel for that family and they're in our prayers it's horrible so yeah I'm just gonna drop that right there or I'm going to lose it so um, RJ's had it rough it just is what it is and the thought of anyone having that happen to them it's hard to comprehend um, yeah, so I'm done. Okay, just done with that. So he had, he went yesterday, um, Saturday he went to a roping, uh, team roped, and then he stayed the night there because we have the new trailer with, well, it's not new now, it's about a year we've had it, but it's got living quarters in it. We've got a mattress up there. He can curl up, go to sleep. It's got a generator that he can plug it in and do heat and air conditioning. So, I mean, it doesn't have heat. I have a little heater for it. Anyway, so he stayed down there and then he roped again yesterday. I have not talked to him today because it was late and we did the whole time change thing. <laughs> yeah, so it's been, it's kind of been like this this week, but you know, it, it is what it is. All right, in the farmhouse. First things first, I brought the bread machine to my place, or mine and roommate's place, or however you want to call this. Um, I call the farm RJ's place, and then this is my place. So, um, yeah, I brought the bread machine, and I made the most amazing cottage cheese and chive bread now if you've followed us at all I used to make goat cheese and do it but it's not bad with cottage cheese either oh my gosh um, matter of fact I still have some and uh, it's good it, it's more of it's more dense it, it's kind of like a sweet bread and you bake it like a sweet bread but it's not sweet um but yeah it's awesome so i've been playing with the bread machine um i'm going to try and here in a little bit just make some regular bread the problem is is that first off that bread didn't rise up and yes it's made with yeast so it should have little pockets of bubbles and but the humidity in this house and everything is different so I have to figure out what temperature. I think we've had the heater set at like 64. It's a little nippy in here in the morning. But as the day warms up, the house warms up. So yeah, it's been, the last two days it's been rainy. So it's been a little damp in here. And that may have affected it. I don't know. So um, yeah, I do know. Humidity affects bread. Um, if you can get it moist and, and a little humid in your house when you're baking bread, it always will seem to rise a little better. Mm -hmm. Yes, it does. Humidity affects it. So I don't know if this house is a little bit drier, a little bit more moist, um, whatever. Uh, it tasted fine. It just didn't rise as much as normal. So I'm going to try some regular bread and see how it does. Okay. Um, the other thing that I've got going on in the farmhouse is kind of my own struggle, and that's where the Bible verse came from. 
it is one thing to sit behind this camera and tell you guys everything. Um, what's changed, things that are different in my life. Um, there's no questions asked. I just tell you the way it is and it's done. Um, the class that I did for Wamego for the, you know, because of COVID, it had to be done virtually. I did the class for it um, and I put it online again in front of a camera. We're all a little bit better at just sitting and talking when there's nothing being fired back at you. And as y'all know, y'all leave dirty comments or whatever. Or I, I have no problem with delete key. Yeah, I read them, but I don't answer them and I will delete them. So I, I just don't let that online thing get out of control. Um, We've just always been that way because RJ started this back when he was a kid and we still hold those policies. Um, we plan on being family friendly every once in a while. RJ will slip and say a word or something, you know, nothing bad. Um, maybe sucks or crap and I don't like that. So yeah, we try not to do those things. Um, you have to remember that in my house, if you, if there's no way to use the word nicely, it's a dirty word. So that means stupid is a dirty word. Um, and my kids grew up knowing that because there's no way to use that word in a nice fashion. So therefore, it's a dirty word. Just saying. And yes, RJ and I go back and forth and banter and stuff and sometimes it gets a little... But it's not... It's not directed at how I live my life. So with all of that being said, I am struggling. I've been invited to a homestead exposition. Um, I've been invited to sit and spin um, and do a spinning demonstration with a friend. Not She was actually invited. She's like, come with me. Um, her and I have two very different teaching styles. And between the two of us, there's no one we can't teach. Just saying, I've taught from four-year-olds all the way up from drop spindle to having children sit on my lap and them spinning. Um, it She teaches a little bit different. And so there are adults and stuff. The kid thing, she's had them sit on her lap and do, but I can also teach drop spindling. So I will probably... Uh, um, her and I are going to have a, a small spin-in today here at the house and we're going to talk about it and I might take my drop spindles so that, you know, people can see. Um, I don't mind doing that, but I don't know if I'm ready to be out in the public yet because life has changed and I haven't told a whole lot of people why and honestly that's probably not something I'm ever going to put out there. It's life. Life changes. And it's my personal business. So as much as I love you guys, very few people know. And these changes did not come along all of a sudden. They were gradual. And then we kind of dropped off the grid for a while um, to deal with some things. And then we're back. And, and so... Yeah, and RJ is still back. He's just not on camera. Um, him and I talk all the time. Uh, yeah, it, it is what it is, and it's a good thing. I'm just saying, it's a good thing. So, oh, and there goes my phone. <laughs> and, of course, and I did start working off of um, the farm long before we dropped off for a while to take care of some things. Um, it is what it is and I just don't know if I'm ready to answer questions and I don't know how I'm going to handle it I want to go I there's people when I put out that it was discussed on Facebook in a make along thread um, the one that I was making with the virus shawl 
and a bunch of people jumped in and said, hey, yeah, I haven't seen you in forever. It would be great. Yes, please come. Mm. <laughs> I'm not sure that, and you have to remember, the ones that see me in person don't always watch my podcast. So they, some of them don't even know that I don't live on the farm yet. So uh, for those of you who do watch steadily, love you guys. And I love that you guys don't criticize. We've had a few, I guess they call them trolls. I say bad worms, you know, because we're a farm. You got good worms, you got bad worms. <laughs> anyway, um, so we haven't really had a whole lot of trolls. Um, we've had some questions I just haven't answered. But other than that, and nobody's criticized. Nobody says, hey, you didn't answer my question, you know. It just kind of gets lost in the Facebook and algorithm stuff. So I'm good with that. But I might actually try a face-to-face. -face. Um, it is March, oh, where did they go? March 27th from 9 to 5. It's down in Skytook, if anybody is out. Um, yeah, let me see if I can find it. I thought I had it saved to my phone. Let me see if I did. Uh, why is that coming up like that? Ah, oh, there it is. Okay, sorry. So it's a homestead exposition. It's a free event. They have some demos. Um, it's March 27th from 9 to 5. And it's at the Hillside Farm. The address is... 206 East 181st Street North in Skytook. Um, they're going to have demonstration type, live demonstration type classes, soap making, canning, meat processing, gardening, livestock, you know, and much, much more. It says, um, of course, spinning will be in there, and I'm thinking I'm going to take my drop spindle. Jane doesn't drop spindle. She knows how. She's got the principle. She prefers her wheel, and when you don't use something, you know, you don't, aren't as proficient at it. Me, I've used the drop spindle from the time I was little up, and I am proficient at it. Yes, I prefer my wheel when I'm doing stuff like this, but yeah, I might take a drop spindle or two and go from there. Um, and as you know, I have my big walking wheel. I'm pretty comfortable just spinning. Jane says I must have been a, a spinner in a... He, she says, uh, an old maid or spinning, you know, I must have spun in another life or something. <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't know. But, um, that will be, it's Aunt Gora Jane that's asked me to come down and go with her. I'm going to talk to her more about it today. Um, like I said, we're having a little spit, spin, in, spin in here at the house. We're going to play in fiber. She's bringing some beautiful fiber that I saw. And I actually have a bat that, um, is Straw Family Farm Fiber that I am thinking, Hitch, come on. He's just wallowing around underneath the table hitting the camera. Um, and I think it's time to do a giveaway. I've been back long enough and I don't know what we're gonna do. I think we're gonna do it for Easter. Um, I think I'm just gonna do a spinning bat. Um, so if there's any spinners out there, uh, I don't know what how I'm gonna do it yet. But, of course, it'll just be a comment on YouTube or um, on Facebook. So, I don't know if I'm going to hold it to just YouTube. Don't know. But, if we're at that expo, I might just say, hey, and do it for Easter. So, sorry, that's my work phone. But anyway, so I look for that next week. I'm going to figure it out by next week. Jane will be here and we're going to have some fun today. And I'm going to figure out the drawing. And yeah. So, rough week personally for RJ. Um, not the fact that it happened and it was a three-year-old kid. That breaks my heart. But not so rough on me as it was on him. I mean, he knew the people. He roped with them. Yeah. Me, eh, I was just RJ's mom if I showed up where he was roping. 
and they wouldn't know me unless they saw me with RJ. It, it's not like I'm always around there. So, um, yeah. Rough week on that part. Bread. I'm going to do some more. Um, spinning. Um, and like I said, this once I get to round seven of that other thing, it should be redundant. And then I'll make good progress. But I do have to sit and read the pattern to get to that row seven. So not made it before, but it does look beautiful. And I'm, I like the way it's working up. It's just pooling different than I thought it would. So I think you're up to date. Um, today, if it's nice, I'm going to try and get the grow tower put outside and put together. And like I said, I'll look for that thing and see if I can put a card in here. I don't know if I can or not, but I shall try. I will see you guys on the flip side. Thanks for watching. Bye.